an excellent payoff. Directed by Matt Reeves, the eighth film on the surprisingly long-running Apes franchise was released in July of 2014 and is the second film in the reboot trilogy. Produced on a mammoth $235 million budget, this science fiction action film still pulled in an impressive $710 million in worldwide proceeds. Ten years after a deadly disease wiped out most of mankind, a growing community of genetically evolved apes and a band of human survivors attempt to coexist. In other words, Dawn builds off the events set up in Rise in wonderful and satisfying ways. Motion capture extraordinaire Andy Serkis returns in the lead role as Caesar, the highly intelligent leader of the apes. Having built a community of talking, family-oriented primates, Circus is confronted with the responsibilities of diplomacy as he advises his tribe, signing, If we go to war, we could lose all we've built, before finishing his thought out loud by softly saying, Home. Family. Future. As an entirely CGI character, he is able to effortlessly bring an emotional and human performance to a decidedly non-human character. Most of this is accomplished with a furrow of his brow or a glance from his deep green eyes. The attention to his character design is impressive, like a scene where Caesar pushes through a subway station's turnstile while all the other apes hop over it. It's a blink and you'll miss a detail that illustrates his human upbringing and advanced intelligence. Commendably, this is one of the only big budget films that uses American Sign Language, or at least an ape inspired variant, as one of its primary on screen languages. Dawn does not shy away from using subtitles. Karen Konoval continues to exhibit emotional depth as Caesar's orange orangutan friend, while the treacherous Koba is now played by Toby Kebbell in a menacing performance. Unfortunately, no human characters from Rise return, but James Franco is referenced in a particularly touching scene. Instead, Jason Clark, Gary Oldman, and Carrie Russell are introduced as hopeful but cautious humans who survived horrible conditions, only to be reluctantly thrust into a war with their violent primate counterparts. For reasons I can't quite articulate, Oldman just doesn't feel well suited to this part, and Russell is underutilized to a criminal extent. Clark, however, impresses, imbuing his character with much needed patience and bravery. We're introduced to the growing conflict between man and ape when a scout party unwittingly sparks a dramatic standoff with both sides on a hair trigger. Hey! 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 I'll kill you! Don't! Don't, Caesar, no! No! The tension that builds between these two groups is the entire driving force of the carefully paced film, which should leave most audiences breathless as it unravels. Throughout the 131-minute film, I found myself rooting for the impossible, the peaceful coexistence of two dominant species. We know it can't happen, but we still want it to. A scene where the Uneasy Alliance finally restores power, allowing a stereo to play music again for the first time in years, is an emotionally powerful moment. That is, of course, until you remember that cars have radios too, and they wouldn't have been affected by a defunct power grid. Dawn is the first apes film shot in the taller 16x9 frame and brilliantly captures both the lush forest areas of the American Northwest as well as the haunting desolation of a ruined San Francisco. The imagery of an abandoned and moss-covered city center is very invocative of Naughty Dog's The Last of Us video game in all the best ways. The visual effects perfectly blend the authentic locations and people with digital creatures that are just as lifelike. For their efforts, Peter Jackson's Weta Digital scored a well-earned Academy Award nomination. The PG-13 rated picture doesn't have many twists or surprises, but the final climactic battle between apes, humans, and other apes is a true spectacle to behold, as seeing an angry ape charge on horseback while firing a machine gun is truly terrifying. An extended POV shot that's fixed to a mounted tank as it plows through a hectic battlefield is also a real highlight. Michael Giacchino's score provides a deep and drum-like rhythm that further emphasizes the seriousness of the realistic narrative, but it also includes occasional musical callbacks to the original score's more whimsical style. Although we're left with a satisfying conclusion, some plot threads are appropriately left unresolved, setting up war for the Planet of the Apes rather nicely. Covering themes of trust, community, and betrayal, this is a touching story mixed with captivating and exciting action. An excellent summer blockbuster that improves with every viewing, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes is the best apes yet and is worthy of my highest score. I'm re-rating this in amazing. That does it for this review, but if you'd like to watch more Movie Night, click or tap the thumbnails on the left. And don't forget to visit the Jog Wheel YouTube channel to see full episodes of the show, in addition to the other content I produce. My name is Jonathan Paula. Thanks for watching. Have a good movie night. Thank <laughs> you.